Hello, my name is Christine Charter and this presentation is the end result of a semester-long study into STEM programming in libraries that I did for a directed reading course um, at the University of Oklahoma. Over the course of the semester, I've read many articles about STEM programming in libraries as well as STEM education in general. I've explored online resources from libraries that are currently and successfully offering STEM programming. Additionally, I've delved into the evaluation methods area of STEM programming to try and understand how librarians look at their programs and know whether or not what they're doing is valuable to their patrons, their community, and their libraries. I'd like to begin by explaining my initial objectives for this directed reading course that helped guide me during the semester. I first had a desire to research the impact of STEM education and engagement in libraries. I wanted to explore what programs, libraries, and other like-minded organizations have implemented while developing a list of best practices that could guide those wishing to start their own programming or hone their existing programs. Those best practices and the experience of learning about STEM education helped me complete my third objective, which was to develop the skills necessary to successfully create my own STEM programming in a practical environment. Lastly, I documented all the resources I read, viewed, and discovered on my blog to complete my final objective, which was to create a list of STEM-themed materials that could be collected and used in partnership with STEM programming. My blog was meant as a weekly check-in to document what I had been reading and what I had discovered along the way. It's chronological in nature and documents a learning process, which is oftentimes messy and disjointed. This presentation is meant to synthesize the major takeaways and themes that I learned. I'll explain the best practices that I've come up with and highlight some of the major resources that I found most useful. Three best practices and advice kept coming up in my readings this semester over and over again. Good STEM programming involves inspiring exploration, making STEM relevant, and engaging with community partners. One of the benefits that libraries have over schools as a learning institution is that children and teens are not required to visit and get involved. Their participation is voluntary. What this means is that libraries have the opportunity and motivation to make learning fun. Librarians should not act as teachers, but as learning guides. Don't just offer lectures or lessons in math and science, but design experiments and programs where kids can truly explore STEM principles. Let children get their hands dirty and let them ask questions. STEM education isn't just about learning hard facts about, for example, gravity or multiplication. It's just as important to learn the fundamental skills involved in understanding the whys and hows behind those concepts. Problem solving, critical thinking, curiosity, and collaboration are skills that go hand in hand with STEM education. Libraries are uniquely situated to offer hands-on learning opportunities that may teach or reinforce STEM concepts, but that also allow for broader experiences with soft skills that are translatable to nearly all aspects of children's lives. So much of the literature and research on STEM education revolves around I have no background in education, so what has been really helpful for me to learn was about the so-called ecosystem of learning. The idea behind this is simple. Learning is not only confined to the classroom. Children absorb through informal learning processes outside of school and through their everyday lived experiences. This is so important for libraries to understand. Children and teens don't experience libraries in a vacuum, and libraries should not be acting as isolated organizations. Community institutions are stronger when they work together. With that in mind, librarians should be reaching out to local schools to get an idea of what teachers are teaching and when. They should be involved in asking how their programs can help support students' formal learning. Much of the professional literature addresses a perceived uncertainty and lack of confidence among librarians who themselves feel unprepared and unqualified to teach STEM subjects. One way to combat this is to get local experts from museums, zoos, aquariums, universities, etc. involved in your programs. These people often have a passion for their chosen subjects 
and are more than willing to offer help in whatever way they can. Some might be willing to come speak or put on a program, or they might even provide resources and tools that libraries may otherwise not be able to afford. Understanding that libraries work within a larger learning ecosystem should also inform the way librarians assess their programs. Counting the number of participants that come to each program is a somewhat superficial measurement that might not help librarians or their community stakeholders understand the true value of their programs. There are a number of different evaluation tools available that take into consideration a child's greater learning environment and that collect data on difficult to measure skills and experiences. Inspiring exploration, making STEM relevant, and engaging with community partners, each of these three best practices work together and when implemented, can strengthen the STEM programming a library offers. I'd like to conclude my presentation with three of my favorite resources that I think should be staples in a STEM librarian's toolkit. Each one of these is updated regularly and offers a wide variety of inspiration and or education on STEM programming. STARnet stands for Science, Technology, Activities, and Resources Library Education Network and, like its name suggests, is designed specifically for librarians who do or want to start doing STEM programming. It sponsors and promotes events and projects, as well as it offers up-to-date blog posts, articles, discussion groups, and webinars to keep even the most seasoned STEM librarian informed. InformalScience.org is a great place for librarians who wish to gain more theoretical knowledge about STEM education, as well as a good place for librarians to research evaluation tools and decide which ones would work best for their particular library. It also offers inspiration for programs and project ideas. I really like the Library Makers blog, which was created and is updated by a practicing librarian from the Madison Public Library. It has detailed project ideas for younger children with lots of pictures and gives step-by-step -step instructions as well as reflections on what did or did not work when she actually put on the program at her library. More about my learning journey and specific resources can be found on my blog, christinecharter.wixsite.com slash STEM and Libraries. A complete bibliography of everything I read and viewed, along with a list of informal resources, can also be found here.